It is Rivalry Week here on WOSN. Week 10 of the high school football season. We are here at Champions Field at Stadium Park here in Delphis. And we are proud to bring you high school football action. If we can talk over the PA announcer. Oh, wow. Jefferson Wildcats hosting the Spencerville Bearcats. Good evening, everyone. Alongside Dar Nevergal, I'm Patrick Kamler. Not an optimal season for the Jeff Cats. Looking for, still looking for their first win in the Northwest Conference this season. And uh, for Spencerville, it's an opportunity for them to finish the regular season 500. Um, but both teams have uh, their hands full tonight. Well, they certainly do. And, it, and, and I would not say it's been a very optimistic team, season for either team. I say pretty disappointing for both of them. I know that Spencerville expecting a lot more from their, their team as well. But, you know, you look down at this Delph Delphus Jefferson team, and I was looking at their roster, and I counted five seniors on it. So it's a very young team. And even on their starters, you look at a lot of juniors being starting on there. Their quarterback is a senior, but a lot of juniors, a couple of sophomores, freshmen, you know. So it's a young team, so they got a little bit to look forward to next year as well. But this would be a big plus for them if they could pull off a win tonight against this Bearcat team, who, uh, like I said, they're four and five, one and five in the Northwest Conference, averaging about 17 points a game, giving up 34 points a game. Flip side, Jefferson averaging eight, eight points, points a game and giving up 39 points a game. So it's hard to know what to expect from this one here. Uh, without a doubt, and with the exception of uh, Carter Egner, who is the uh, quarterback for the Jeff Katz offense, it's uh, very young. And uh, we'll see what happens as we get ready for this one. When we come back, we'll have a kickoff right here between the Jeff Katz and the Bearcats here on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard brought to you tonight by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Just about ready to get started here at Stadium Park under the lights. Spencerville won the toss and deferred to the second half, so the Jeff Cats will put the offense on the field first. And for Spencerville, it was a tremendous start to the season, 3-0 and they have struggled to find wins since then, winning only once in the last few weeks. The ball fielded by Jefferson out to uh, just shy of the 20-yard line, and that's where the Jeff Cats will hit the field for the first time tonight. Jace Lindemann, the return man there for the Jeff Cats. Yeah, Jefferson averaging, you know, 152 yards total offense this season. On the flip side, Spencerville averaging uh, Total offense, you know, of 185, you know, basically, or 257, basically. So not a lot of offense on the Jefferson side. So we'll have to see what kind of offense they can come out with here, what kind of formations they're going to run. They're going to run from the shotgun starting out. Ball officially marked at the 21st and 10. Man in motion and the handoff out to the 20. And that's about it. I think, Patrick, one of the keys in this game, too, is going to be turnovers. Both these teams have minus five turnover ratios, you know, when you look at it. But Jefferson has caused 22 fumbles so far this season. They've recovered five of those, but they've also fumbled the ball 14 times and lost six of those, plus 12 interceptions they've given up. So they've turned the ball over a lot, and they can't afford to do that tonight. Definitely the things that make uh, Coach pull, your, pull his hair out. Here on second down, the pass swung out, pass complete to Lucas Millman with the catch, but Spencerville right there making the stop. Not a whole lot of space gathered there. Gavin Schwartz, among others, in on the stop. And it'll be third down. Yeah, a little nice little swing pass out there. You're looking at Carter Agner. I mean, he's 44 for 91 and 48% so far this season, 403 yards, four touchdowns, but he's thrown five interceptions as well. Luke Rohde and Dean Trentman there in the backfield. Trentman was the ball carry on first down. Now Agner rolling to his right pass incomplete. Maybe a little miscommunication there. Pass eh, possibly intended for Parker Shade, number 24. Millmine also in there, number 11. Uh, regardless, it'll be fourth down coming up for the Jeff Cats. Yeah, like right, Patrick, because it went right through the hands of one of them. 
you know, and I think he got, got shielded a little bit by the other receiver. A punt. Nice high punt. It's going to take a Jeff Cat bounce, and Spencerville's just going to let it roll there as well. Sensabaugh backs off, and it'll be down at the 38 yard line. And that is where Spencerville will take over for their first drive of the game. Not bad field position to start to drive out, you know, in your own 38 yard line. You know, like I said, you look at the Spencerville team, they don't, they don't throw a lot. Whoa. That'll get your attention. <laughs> Not even sure what that was. But well, it's near Halloween, so <laughs> yeah, it's really it is hard, near to, Halloween, hard to say at this point. <laughs> but, they, you know, when it, when it comes to, to your offensive, you know, the total offense for the Spencerfield team, 257 yards total offense. 193 of that is on the ground. Well, looks like there was a personal foul that was assessed. We didn't actually see the call on the field. But that backs Spencerville up 15 yards, so that'll take them back to the 23-yard line. And we'll see what the Bearcats can do starting off. Here goes the handoff on first down and plenty of space out to the 36-yard line. That is going to be good for a first down. Grady Smith with the carry and a lot of truly first down. Now they got a bit, bunch of it back right off the bat. You know, you talked about this being a rivalry game, and uh, you got to keep your emotions in check. You started off with a personal foul right off the bat, but Grady Smith running there to get that yardage back. And off, this is Sensabaugh working the other side out across the 40 to the 41. Number two, Sensabaugh, carry tackle by number 23, Dean Trentman. Bearcats with some nice running backs back there with Sensabaugh and Grady Smith, and Zach Losher as well back there. There are a number of guys, if you look down the Spencerville Bearcat roster, that they're, look what their position is, and it just says athlete. Yep. So yeah. it's kind of wherever you need him. Sensible, the guy who just ran the football, one of those guys who uh, is a tremendous athlete in and of himself. Uh, he's uh, probably about ready to get ready for basketball season here coming up very shortly. Second Both. down and five. Here's the pitch. And there it is, Sensible. Nice blocking. Oh, nice cut. Flag hey, he's comes got a flag. out. At the end of this play, a sense of ball running all the way out to the 17-yard line. Uh, more than enough for a lot of truly first down, but I think this one might be coming all the way back, Dar. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you've got him on a hold or something over there on that sideline. Nice cutback, though, by sense of ball just to get it open. Indeed. So a hold called with flag down there at the Spencerville 45-yard line. So that's going to move this one all the way back. Our quarter, first quarter brought to you by Citizens National Bank. You can see how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. So instead of being set up at the 18-yard line of Delphus Jefferson, Spencerville all the way back to the 35 of their own. And they'll redo it at second and 11. Both these teams with good-sized quarterbacks, both of them 6'4". Push up the middle is trying to get some additional running room there. Yeah, Grady Smith, maybe? I Zach think Lozier it was Grady Smith. Carries. Nope, Zach Lozier, number 24. Oh, right. Tackle by number 54, DJ Scales. And a Jeff Cat player is banged up a little bit. Going to try and walk it off. That's Dalton Willis. Wills, I'm sorry, number 50. Yeah, they're big uh, tackle and defensive end. So he is going to come out. Braxton Seaver is going to check in. So one sophomore replacing another as Wills will head to the sideline to get looked at. Well, the Bearcats facing the third and seven now. They're doing a lot of traffic back and forth between these, the 40 and the 30 and the 25 <laughs> and back up again. And so far, Spencerville's been dinged for 25 penalty yards. Yeah, both these teams you know, get penalized too much this season. 41 penalties coming in for uh, Spencerville, 49 penalties for Delphus Jefferson. Here's Sensabaugh on third down and is going to get there and has the Lonnox Drew League first down. 
So moving the chains and moving it on the ground. Of course, if you're a longtime Spencerville Bearcats fan, uh, running game is kind of what you're used to. It's kind of what you guys do, what you're used to. As I said, averaging 193 yards on the ground this season, just 63 yards through the air. So they're not going to throw it a whole lot of times. You know, oh. Card Orr's thrown it 82 times, but he hit 52% of them. But. So they say no first down, so they go for it on fourth down, and they will pick it up, moving across midfield, picking up the Lodix Jewelry first down there, Kyle Boyer. Got needed a yard and got about seven. So I thought based on the spot that that was more than enough for a first down, but took them one extra play to move the chains, and they do. So the ball now at the... Jeff Cat 47 yard line with 7.54 to go here in quarter number one. Yeah, the big thing for Jefferson tonight is they've got to tackle and they've got to wrap up quickly and hold their ground. Here's the pitch out once again to Boyer. Boyer outside and to the 26 yard line for a lot of truly first down. Grady Smith on the carry, tackle by number 65. Tackle made by Jackson Rarick. Jackson Rarick. Jackson Rarick, who is wearing 65 tonight. We got him as 55 on the roster. Yeah, Grady Smith's only a junior, six foot, 150 pounds, but you know he had 439 yards coming in here on the ground, five touchdowns, 156 yards in the air that he's caught for one touchdown. There's Lozier once again. Out across the 20 to the 19. Well, if the Bearcats can keep getting six, seven, eight yards, a pop one for time, you know, they're going to chew up a lot of yardage tonight. Mm -hmm. Play action. Looking past, threading the needle, incomplete. Looking for a sense ball going across the middle. That was a nice pass by Orr, right in between a couple defenders to be put it right on the mark. Sense ball just not able to hang on to it. He said it, Orr will throw the ball. You know, he's got 541 yards in the air this season. He's also thrown six interceptions, so. 6'4", 195. And they, another Lonnox Julie first down on the carry. And the other thing too, Patrick, is they're chewing up an awful lot of time off this clock. Indeed they are. Jeff Katz had the ball for three plays. Four plays, I guess, if you count the punt. And Spencerville has had it for the rest of the time. Here is Lozier once again out to the 10-yard line before he is stopped by a tandem of Bearcats. Lozier on the carry, tackled by number 65, Raring. Raring again on the stop. Brings up second and seven. Well, Jackson Raring is, is a big linebacker for uh, Delphus Jefferson. He's all over the place tonight. And all through the season, he's been one of their anchors on their defensive side. Second down and long in the pitch. This is Lozier trying to go to the outside oh, nice and wrapped up. Nice tackle indeed. Getting there on the far side. Going to be a probably no gain on that play. That Parker Shade maybe. Lozier the that. Nope. Luke Brody with a stop. And that'll be third down. Gain of two officially on that play. Here comes third down. Double handoff, cut it inside. This is Owen, oh, I'm sorry. Sensible on the carry. Brings up. That was We start bringing binoculars to these things. It is. Since ball again, that's a nice double handoff there, you know, but good job by Jeff Delphus Jefferson just to find the ball. 
Fourth down, and I think they got, and they about got half the line to jump. So that will go against Delphus Jefferson, and that will give Spencerville a first down. Yeah, we talked about it earlier on. The turnovers are something you really can't have in this game. Mistakes like that, mental mistakes like that, to get yourself caught off, you know, offside like that, give them another first down. Yeah. Ball at the two, first and goal, and this is Lozier going to power it in for a Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. Lozier on the carry, touchdown, Bearcat. Nice 77 yard drive for Spencerville. Capping it off with a two yard run by Zach Lozier, and now they will attempt the extra point. Carter Orr, the quarterback, also the kicker, and the extra point is up and good. It is 4.34 remaining here in quarter number one. Spencerville strikes first. They lead 7-0 here on WOSN. Welcome back. Our first down sponsor tonight is Wattix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at wattix.com. 77-yard drive for Spencerville's Bearcats strike first. They lead 7-0. And a drive that was primarily on the ground, Dar, which would be no surprise no, to your Spencerville fan. No, absolutely not. I think there was only one pass in that one there. But they recovered from the early penalties that they had, which kept pushing them back to get that 77-yard drive and, make the, and get the touchdown. But, yeah, I expect Spencerville, that's their MO. They're going to run it all night long. That ball will go into the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. You know, something else Spencerville did, they were willing to roll the dice, went for it on fourth down a couple of times, were two for two. One they got on the ground, and the other one they got via the penalty. So uh, Spencerville acting like, unless they're – Pinned pretty deep, and it's a fourth and long. Probably acting like it's going to be four down territory all night tonight. Well, I think so. I think they're going to leave it up to their defense to hold these guys. You know, if we do not make it on fourth down, we're going to turn the ball back over to them, but I think you guys can hold them. Double handoff here again oh, for nice the Jeff shot. Cats on first down. There's a hurdle. It takes a shot at the 35 Ooh. yard line. The Lotto Jewelry first down. That was Trevor Whitney that hit him. The six foot four, 280 pound senior for Spencerville. And my land, you're going to fill that tomorrow. Millmine, the <laughs> ball carrier. And oh my. <laughs> you take hits like that, you're either awake or asleep. It looks like Millmine is awake, very or, much so. Or, or wish you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fresh set of downs, their first first down of the night. Agner rolling to his right, directing traffic, throws this one up and away, incomplete. Yeah, he's rolling out there to the right, kept motioning to his receiver, go downfield, go downfield, but really Spencerville had that covered downfield, so he just had to throw it away, but there was some hot pursuit on him too from that Spencerville Bearcat defense coming around the corner. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, Second and 10 coming up for Delphus Jefferson. Trentman in the backfield or looking to pass. Looking oh, across the middle, open. has a man open. Good for a lot of Julie first down and then some as Jace Lindemann brings it in and is tackled around the 10 yard line. It's gonna be First and goal for Delphus Jefferson. There's a breakdown communications on that Spencerville secondary because he was wide open. You know, the, the question came down to was, was he going to catch the ball because that's the scariest one. When you're that wide open and you see it floating down to you and nobody around you. But there was a breakdown somewhere in that secondary for uh, Spencerville. Sometimes the amount of green that's out there can throw you <laughs> off. And not in the case for Lindemann. He brings that in, and the Jeff Cats, the fans here in attendance, have come to life as they spot the ball at the 11-yard line. So it'll be a first and 10 coming up. Not quite first and goal yet. 
as we said for Jefferson, they're only averaging eight points a game and they're only 152 yards total offense this season per game. And so, you know, a big play like that is definitely going to wake everybody up. The touchdown here would be huge in a lot of ways. Here is Orr rolling, throwing, pass incomplete, intended for Lindemann. And uh, I, I thought for a second they weren't going to throw the flag because it looked like it wasn't going to be close to being caught. But they put it out there, and they're signaling pass interference on Spencerville. Oh, I think you're right, Patrick. It looked like it was going to be well over his head, but apparently the referee thought, well, maybe he was far enough and back in the end zone that he might have been able to get to it. So that'll make it half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down for Delphus Jefferson. That'll put the ball at the five-yard line. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, the automatic first down for him. And Rody throws, he throws you know, 92 passes so far this season, too. He hasn't been real accurate on the uh, so far tonight, except for that one that he caught to get him down to this position. Man in motion, or is going to keep it, lowers the shoulder, and takes it in. Is it a touchdown? Yes. A record long landscape touchdown. And the Jeff Cats, one point away from tying this one up. Carter Agner taking home the six foot four senior. Points as you mentioned, hard to come by and Jefferson has seven of them and the extra point is good. We are all tied up here at Stadium Park, seven seven here on WOSN. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Ricker Lawn and Landscape. Contact Ricker Lawn and Landscape for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, and installation and more. So the Jeff Cats with the answer going right down the field. Carter Egner keeping it for a five yard touchdown scamper. And this one is all tied up at seven. And the Jeff Cats had struggled. Well, they've struggled for offense all season. And before last week when they scored 13 points, they had gone three straight games without scoring. So trying to reverse that trend and have been successful so far here is Spencerville will start at the 35-yard line. Now we talked about this being a young Jefferson team, and you can see right now, you know, they are so excited. They scored a touchdown to tie this game up, and look at their defense. You know, even their kickoff return guys are all up. I, I tell you, you know, what, they are fired they are up fired about up. Zeke Ward making the stop there. Now let's see if they can carry over to their defense that's, that's a, out on the field right now. That's an internal team thing, no doubt. Just fired up about what that young man did, senior. Play action. Or going downfield, looking for it, and the pass incomplete, uh -oh. and a flag comes out as there was contact right before the ball Forest got there. Falls incomplete, penalty marker on the field. So that's going to be pass interference. And then to add, well, injury to penalty, I guess, in this case, there's an injured Jeff Cat down on the field. And we will step away while he's attended to. We'll be back here on WOSN. Two forty-nine left in quarter number one. The injured Jeff Cat was Luke Rohde, and he was able to walk off, being checked out to checked out on the sideline, and actually looks looks okay. So likely we'll see him back in action here at some point. He may have just got the air knocked out of him. There's a lot of bodies making contact on that yep. particular pass. So, so. 
Pass interference called against Delphus Jefferson. That gives Spencerville a Lottox Julie first down. Ball at the 50. And the handoff here on first down is the ball carrier at that one, Grady Smith. Out to the 46. Tackled by Rarick and Miller. Now Rarick again on another tackle there for uh, Delphus Jefferson. Nice thing you saw from that defense for Delphus Jefferson. The guys were staying home where they were supposed to be and just waited for the ball run, uh, carrier to come to them. Didn't over pursuit that play. Gain of four on the play here, second down. And this is the pitch to sense the ball. Working the outside and nice speed burst there out for the first down. Tackled at the 35 yard line, pushed out of bounds rather. A lot of surely first down for the Bearcats. Yeah, Will sends the ball, just a sophomore, 5'9", 126 pounds, they got him listed at, but he's got a lot of speed on that outside. And, that, you know, we talked about it already, you know, the running backs that this Spencerville team is. This is their MO. They like to give it to different guys all the time, you know, and let them run the ball. This one up the middle, Lozier out to the 20-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 20 Two yard line, another Lottox Julie first down. Spencerville is getting the run game going here in this one. Yeah, this is a mirror image of their first drive that they had, you know. Just continue to, to move it, the chains down the field, and get in the red zone and then punch it in. Ball on the 22, here is Lozier. Breaks a tackle down to the 16. So just a steady dose of Lozier, Smith, and Sensabaugh. And an occasional pass play thrown in for good measure. And off, this is Lozier, near side. Ball comes out. We'll see where it came out. I thought it went into the end zone. And they're discussing that, of course, Vitt Went out of bounds in the end zone. That's going to be Jefferson football. And there it is. Yep. So the ball stripped, fumbled, goes out of bounds in the end zone. So Jefferson fourth in the turnover. Well, I mentioned that earlier on about Jeff Katz and the fact that they've caused now 23 fumbles they've caused. You know, this one getting them the ball back and stopping uh, Spencerville on this particular drive. You know, they recovered five of those coming into this game, but it's the fact that they've caused that many fumbles, you know, the way they're tackling, and, and apparently they go right for the ball. You know, that on the flip side is the 11th, uh, or 11th fumble now for our 17th fumble now for uh, Spencerville this season. That was Grady Smith, who was the ball carrier, I believe, on that last play. So first down, Delphus Jefferson, high snap, able to corral that one and spinning around, taking some shots there too. Dean Trentman on the carry. Carry by Trentman, gain of two. Trentman with 217 yards coming into this game and that was a good job by the quarterback for them. Delphus Jefferson just pull that out of the air and still be able to hand it off. Indeed, that was very close to going over his head. One of, the benefits of being, <laughs> say, one of the benefits of being 6'4", it's really hard to chuck one over your head. Agner directing traffic, final 15 seconds of the first quarter. That one a little high. Trentman with the carry once again, down at the 21-yard line. Might have lost a yard on that play. And that will be the final play of quarter number one. A good one brewing here at Champions Field. The Jeff Cats and the Bearcats are tied at seven. We bring you the second quarter when we come back on WOSN. Our second quarter sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cmbohio.com. Into the second quarter, 7-7. Seven seven. Spencerville and Delphus Jefferson all tied up. Patrick Amler, Darn Nevergall here with you. And this has been 
It's hard to say that this has been what we expected because you don't know what you're going to get when four and five takes on one and eight. But I think that so far this has been a pretty competitive matchup. I think it has been, and it, you know, like I said, both these teams having what they consider a disappointing season. But this is their last game of the season, so you know you're going to throw everything out there that you can. Trettman, maybe a yard, and that's going to bring up fourth and long and. The punt unit will come out. Brings up fourth down. Send Luke Rohde back to, to kick again. You mentioned, oh, sorry, go ahead. Darn. Averaging about 32, 32 yards a punt. Another high snap gets that, just gets that punt off. It's going to take a Jefferson bounce. And it will end up being a nice punt as that one rolls all the way down to the 37-yard line. Of course, the Jeff Cat season is going to wrap up after this contest, and they'll start looking forward to other pursuits. Spencerville will have a Week 11 contest, most likely have a Week 11 contest, okay. assuming they come away with a win here tonight. Currently, they are, this is all unofficial, by the way, mm -hmm. in case anyone from the OHSAA is listening, the 10 seed is where they currently sit, and they can stay in the postseason with a win, an outside shot at a at hosting a home game. Wow. But that's going to uh, involve a lot of what happens around them. So if you assume that most everyone else ahead of them wins, that probably won't happen. Here's a great start, wide open pitch and catch. Uh -oh. Out to the far side, breaks a tackle, and Grady Smith is getting it back for the fumble oh earlier, and he takes it all the way in for a Ricker touchdown. Wow. Don't worry, Coach. I got this. Yes. 62 yards in the house. I'm sorry, Coach. I didn't mean to fumble the football, but I'll make up for it. Wow, you just got to wrap him up. You cannot let him keep spinning around like that and breaking, breaking loose. Jefferson did a nice job of catching up with him, but after that, they just got to wrap him up and pull him down. That could be the longest pass play of the season for Spencerville. Just throwing that out there. Maybe that's true, maybe that's not, I don't know. Here is uh, Orr with the kick. That one up and good. Momentum's a funny thing in high school football. Just when you think Jefferson has got it rolling, Spencerville takes it right back, as well as, well as the lead. 14 to seven, Bearcats on top here on WOSN. Back to action here, 10.54 left in quarter number two. Spencerville wasting no time, going over the top, through the air for a touchdown, 63-yard pass completion to Grady Smith, and it's a 14-7 Spencerville lead. And fielded at the 10-yard line. And solid return out to the 36 yard line. That's where the Jeff Cats will take over. Dude, that might have been Zach Losher on the return. Yep. That was number 24, Parker Shade for the Wildcats. Tackle by number 44, Chandler Bassett. Yeah, Parker Shade on the return. Sorry. A nice return by Parker Shade, too, because, you know, he caught that on a full run. Saw a little bit of over pursuit there by Spencerville's yep. uh, return team. Let him get past him on that one there, but. Good starting uh, location for us, or for Jefferson tonight. Kind of a second level tackle there. Because if he had broken that last tackle, there wasn't really much between him and Paydirt. So able to get the stop there as we have a timeout on the field. And um, at, on break, we were pontificating where Spencerville's next game might be. And of course, if the playoff started today and nobody moved, we think Spencerville is probably traveling just up to Defiance to take on the Tenora Rams. There's a lot of space for that to move, but um, Spencerville most likely will be going on the road. If they moved up to the eighth spot, which is entirely possible with a win and, and obviously some help, they could host a 
playoff game in Spencerville next week, but the I think the greater likelihood is they will be traveling. And the teams that they are possibly matching up with, uh, none of them are slouches. So no, Spencerville no. is <laughs> going to have their hands full uh, next week regardless. But a big win tonight for the Bearcats, you know, would give them a lot of momentum. Here's a nice run by Trentman. Pickup of nine. Jeff Katz showing that they've got some guys that can run the rock here as well. Yeah, Trentman, just a sophomore, you know, but 185 pounds. And I said he had 60 carries for 217 yards coming into this match. And, you know, he showed right there, you know, he just tucked the ball in there and ran over a couple guys. Yeah. Second down and short. Nice snap again. This is Trentman. Finishes the job. Looks like he has the Lodge Jewelry first down. Indeed, he does. They'll move the chains for him. Carry by Trentman is good enough for a Wildcat first down. Delphi saying, well, we can run the ball too. You know, <laughs> hey. Just averaging just under 69 yards a game on the ground, but they're doing a nice job of moving the sticks tonight. And they've got a fresh set at their own 46-yard line. Trentman again receives the handoff and going right up the middle to the 48-yard line. Nice pickup on first down. Trentman on the carry, going through that right side of the uh, offensive line for Delphus Jefferson, finding a little bit of a seam. Nice six-yard pickup on first down. Take that anytime. Indeed you will. Second down and four. Agner having to jump for that snap and picks up a couple of yards. And then bring up third down and short. Rody on the key. They uh, tackle by Sensible. That was Rody, I'm sorry, not Agner, who uh, carried the ball there. Brings up third and three. Yeah, Rody grabbing his arm. Yeah, Rody on a little bit of one on one with Will Sensiball on the outside there. Rody's going to stay in the game there. Yeah, Rody's thrown for 92 times this season as well. So okay. both these guys getting some time at quarterback. And there's oh, Trenton man. running dive down. Lot of Julie first down for Trentman. So moving the sticks once again, down. and Brody's going to head to the sideline, still favoring that right arm. Well, Trentman, 5'10", 185 pounds, and he just bowled his way right through a bunch of guys. I don't. I don't see Carter Agner out there. In fact, it's going to be Andrew Cooley who is out there right now and gets the ball to Trentman, having to reverse field and goes right back into the defender who missed earlier. That was Javier Franco who stopped him for a loss. So Jefferson trying something different on this drive. Carter Agner is out of the game. Helmet off. He's holding his helmet, talking to the coach on the sidelines. And Jefferson is going to take a timeout. We will take it with him. 7.25 left to go in the first half. 14 to 7 Spencerville here on WOSN. Welcome back, 7.25 to go here in quarter number two. Jeff Katz with the ball. A second down and 14 coming up for Delphi Jefferson. And the Wildcat direct snap to Trentman and not going anywhere. Mm. Dropped at the line of scrimmage. Uh, they'll, they'll give him a yard and that'll be third down. And Carter Egner has not been in the game. In fact, they haven't had a quarterback per se the last couple of plays here, Darn. No, and they tried to go over to that left side where you got 
big number 75 standing over there, Trevor Whitney, and I'm not sure I'd want to run that direction when there's 280 pounds standing in front of me. <laughs> now they're going to switch uh, Whitney over to the other side, so now go to the right. Trentman looking to throw it. He will. Ball is batted up and incomplete. So Jefferson running Wildcat. Suppose they're probably one of the teams that, you know, that's rightly named. <laughs> they can do that and yep. get away with it. That was Gavin Schwartz there for Spencerville that knocked that ball in the air. Well, Spencerville's not keen on them getting away with it, and it'll be fourth and 13. And the punt unit, I assume, coming out for Jefferson, although... At this they might, stage, they might go <laughs> for it. I mean, at this stage, we're not going to guess anything. You're you're down seven, which is not you know insurmountable. But you're one and eight. Live a little. Yeah. Try, Why try not? some things out. Why not? Pull all the plays out of the playbook. On fourth down. Cooley back to pass. The freshman <laughs> intercepted. At the 15-yard line, Dylan Short bringing that one down. So an interception thrown by Delphus Jefferson is Dylan essentially Short. as good as a punt. And it'll be a turnover and Spencerville football. Yeah, Dylan Short, the, the senior, picked that one off there. Just kind of overthrown. Found it in his area where he was standing at, but uh, it's been an in, that was an interesting series for Delphus Jefferson. There's no doubt about it. Or in motion here on first down, the pass to Sensabaugh going down to get it, and he will have nine on the play. Very close to a lot of truly first down. Gain of nine brings up second. So they will give him nine. They got some confidence built up on that passing game for Spencerville, which, you know, now they're going to say, hey, we're going to chuck the ball now. We're going to put it up in the air and see what happens. Hand it off to Lozier. Lozier with the Elotics first down out to the 49-yard line. And another first down for Spencerville. Interviewed John Zerbe a number of years ago when he was the head coach of Spencerville and was talking about the offense. And he uh, looked at me and smirked and said, "You know, we might, we might try our pass play, <laughs> our, our every, one every every so often." <laughs> Here's a different pass play. This one out to Smith once again, making some hay on that screen pass out to the 35-yard line. Good for another lot of surely first down. And we are going to have a flag for some extracurricular activity after the play. I saw a Jefferson player shove a Spencerville player, but the flag was on its way out before that. So we'll sort this one out as chippiness in a rivalry game is of no surprise. Now we started out this game with a personal foul right on the first, right off the bat. Uh, that's so. true. So that will be against Jefferson. Penalty marker after the play, unnecessary roughness. So that will move the ball 15 more yards and place it at the 20. So not that Spencerville has needed any help moving the football. No. But they'll get 15 more yards after that play. I'll tell you what, Grady Smith is an outstanding receiver. When he gets that ball out there, he, he's got some moves. Or out to Sensabaugh, and Sensabaugh Brought down, I think, primarily by the face mask as the flag comes out <laughs> at the 13. Two, yeah, always, always a head go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't quite a night train lane tackle, but. No. <laughs> but I got him down, coach. <laughs> <laughs> but, but not like that. Sorry. Did you want him stopped or not? <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be a lot of truly first down with the additional yardage ball at the six. Hand off right oh up the middle goodness. by Sensabaugh, and he finishes off the drive with a Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. touchdown. 
So the Bearcats extend their lead with 4.48 to go here in the first half. It is 20 to seven with the extra point on upcoming. Snap, hold, kick is up and no good. 4.48 to go here in the first half. 20 to seven, Spencerville here on WOSN. Our touchdown sponsor is Ricker Lawn and Landscape. Contact them for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, and installation, and more. Spencerville about to kick the ball once again, up 20 to seven. And a nice hard kick as this one's gonna go out of bounds. And something we've been musing about the last couple of minutes, Carter Egner is on the sideline, helmet off, and been trying to figure out if there's any particular reason, and it could just be Jefferson wanting to, head coach Allen Pullman wanting to try something else. Yeah, try some, try some new things out there. He had the freshman out there quarterback in a little while ago. I guess we can speculate all we want to up here. It doesn't really matter to, uh, to them. No. Well, that's that's true. But uh, it is kind of interesting. Trentman back to pass. Thinking about running it, will run it. Tucks and runs, lowers the Ooh. shoulder. And I was going to say he takes a hit, but he delivered one there pretty Boy. well, too, at the 30-yard line. He met Dylan Short right there. Game of nine brings up second and one. It might have just got a little shorter, I'm not sure. <laughs> but man. Trentman listed at 5'10, 185, and I, I don't I don't think that's accurate. I don't think He looks think a lot bigger than 185 he, out there. He's he's solid, if nothing else. Uh, I mean Yeah. Trentman handling the snap once again. And takes a football ball, I think came out there at the 26 yard line, but I think Trentman got back on top of it. Nope. Nope. Spencer. Spencerville ball. Wow. The number 56 that came up with it for Spencerville. Gavin Schwartz. Yep. Gavin Schwartz comes up with it. And another turnover for Delphus Jefferson. Bearcats take over first and 10. A 27 yard line. And that'd be a fumble number 15 or 16, 15 now for uh, Spencer, or Jefferson this season. Now Spencerville with a short field handoff. Here is Smith once again going right up the middle, almost untouched until he was at the second level. That's a lot of truly first down as he's tackled at the 11. Yeah, he blew right through that hole there and got past the linebackers quickly and forcing your secondary to pull him down. But he's got some speed and he's definitely got some moves to the outside. Without a doubt, Spencerville running downhill at this point. Ball at the 12 yard line. First and 10, quickly back. This is Lozier out across the 10 to the eight. Well, so far, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right now, it's, it's run the ball. You know, going to chew up all the time off the clock, and right now we can just barrel our way through and rely on our offensive line to open holes. Say so Smith, Sensabaugh, and Lozier have been getting it done, and here is Sensabaugh for another touchdown as that extends the Bearcat lead to 26 to seven. Spencerville taking advantage of a short field and punching it in following the turnover. And Jefferson with the touchdown to tie it up at seven and it has been Spencerville ever since. 20 unanswered points for the Bearcats and with three minutes to go in the first half, 27 to seven, Spencerville leads here on WOSN.
Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And our first down sponsor is Lodix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. Spencerville taking it 30 yards for the touchdown. That was their last drive off of the Jefferson fumble and have a commanding 27 to seven lead here in this one. A few young and very vocal fans here on the Jefferson <laughs> side. Of course at that age, you really don't need many reasons to yell at something. No, you don't. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Oh, that one sits right look at the three-yard line. So forced to field it and pushed out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Lindemann on the return. And Wildcats take over. First I'll tell you, Patrick, that's difficult to do on artificial turf is to <laughs> stick a ball like that. Man, that thing didn't move once it hit the hit the turf. It just sat there. Man, if you could do that consistently, there are some oh, D1 programs that would love no to talk kidding. to you. That caught everybody by surprise. Even the you know the kickoff return guy was like, "Whoa, yeah. wait!" I mean, I think even the official was ready to signal a touchback, yeah. and then that ball just hit the three and died. <laughs> Trentman under center takes the direct snap, lowers lowers the shoulder, hey. bounces outside. Look at this run! What a truly first down around across the 45 and brought down at the 47 yard line. So I'll Trittman trying to avenge a fumble Trittman on the last I'll tell you drive. what, that Dean, Dean Trittman has taken every snap now so far, you know, and deciding do I throw the ball or do I run the ball? But either way, I'm going to have the ball. So yeah. he just barrels his way right through there. Does a nice job of following blockers too, though, because he, he could have easily outran that block right there, and he didn't. Trittman with help in the backfield. Blitz coming and getting a loss in the backfield. I think that was Aiden Jennings, who was the ball carrier. 5'7", 135 pound freshman. So, Delphus Jefferson definitely putting in a lot of the young guys. So I was just about to say, looks like a lot of the younger guys are gonna get some time here in the Jefferson Spencerville game. Jace Lindeman checking in. Second down and 11. Oh. Trittman with the handoff. Ball comes oh. loose. The flag comes out. The 41-yard line. Jennings unable to secure the football, and we'll see what the penalty is all about. Jefferson does get the football back. Spencerville calls a timeout. We'll keep it here. We see what the... Well, maybe there wasn't a flag. I don't I think, I think I, it was just timeout. Well, I think there's a, is there a flag at the 43 yard line or is that something else? Mm, maybe just his marker. You, you won't get this riveting commentary anywhere else, folks. That's right. WOSM. What is that on the field? <laughs> it was his marker, okay. That's right, sometimes I can't discern between <laughs> yellow and orange. <laughs> A, uh, a feature my wife loves when we're trying to pick out uh, furniture colors. Oh. <laughs> not that we're deciding between yellow and orange. I'm not single. <laughs> Although, yet, if I pick out orange and yellow furniture. <laughs> That's true. I just leave it up to her. <laughs> right. We have kind of a standing rule. Like, look, you can, you can decorate the house any way you want, just as long as it's not, you know, girly. Mm. You define that however you want. Other than that, I'm fine. Here's Trentman, direct snap, third and 14. Puts that one oh, up, there pass you go. complete at the 45. Good for a lot of jewelry first down. Jace Lindeman bringing that one in. And gets 15 for the first down. Trentman's been wanting to do that forever. You know, ever since, the, okay, we're going to Wildcat. I get to throw the ball? Hey. <laughs> and he finally gets an opportunity to do it and gets 15 yards on that one. I think these are his first uh, attempts of the, of the season, I believe. 
Trentman rolling to his left, throws that one. And you know, I'll tell you what, rolling to his left, throwing with his right, kind of going back a little bit, and that ball had some mustard on it. Yes, it did. I'm going to say he got some distance on that one there. Brings up second and ten. But, boy, he's getting a workout tonight, that's for sure. Yes, without a doubt. Plus, he has to get that, contend with that uh, big defensive line there for Spencerville coming at him every time. The other, well, here's Trentman, and he's going to take off and run past the 40 to the 35-yard line. So a nice pickup on second down will make it Trentman third and short. Gain of nine. So the only other quarterback listed on the roster for Delphus Jefferson is Luke Rohde, and he went out early with an injury, and oh, here's an interception. Out. Now to the 35-yard line, it's brought back. And it's Sam Goki, 5'10", sophomore, caught that one and picked up some nice interception yardage as we are near the end of the first half. 27 seconds left here in the half. Now this will be interesting to see what Spencerville does. You know, you got 27 seconds, but you also just got the ball on the 35 yard line of your opposing team. Two timeouts left and no indication that they're just gonna down this and go to half. Or back to pass is looking for it. Has there it a is. Man and puts it in, Sensabaugh for the touchdown. A record one in landscaping touchdown, and that extends the lead even further, 33 to seven. And nice pass there by Orr, just laying it out there and catching Sensible on a dead run on that right side, and he just hauled it in and just took it right into the house. Bearcats are looking for the running clock here in the rivalry game. Holden is down, and the kick is good. 19 seconds to go in the first half, and a flag comes out. Flag's coming out. Thirty-four to seven, Spencerville on top of Jefferson is. I'm sure there's some mass communication going on in the field between the teams. And the coaches and players. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, that come on, too. guys. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's like we need to. Personal foul. Looks like they are against both teams. The penalties will offset, and the extra point will be good. So, lots of sound and fury signifying nothing. And the teams will get back on the field here. Ready to go to run out the last 19 seconds of this one. Well, Spencerville scored first to make it 7-0, and Jefferson, with a nice response, thought, you know, possibly the Jeff Cats were going to make a statement here in the rivalry game and see what they can do. And um, it's been Spencerville ever since. That thing seemed to have awakened the Bearcats to be able to force a couple turnovers and um, gotten a few touchdowns through the air, which is not something yes. you say very often about Spencerville. But this was a team, too. Uh, the Bearcats had a great start to the season, and they were looking for this one. They, they really wanted to have a good end to the regular season tonight. They absolutely did. And, you know, you look at it, the passes that uh, Carter Orr's been throwing and stuff, I mean, you know, this is a predominantly running team, but that young man's got an arm. I mean, you know, he's right on the money with his passes. He's, he finds his primary receivers. You know, and he's got good receivers out there too. So it's not something, they're not a one dimensional team by any stretch. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Jefferson decides to do here with 15 seconds left and one timeout. I think 
Andrew, well, I thought Cooley was going to be out there. And yeah, he did too. He was, he was shooting <laughs> off. So they will just down the ball and head to halftime. 34 to 7. Spencerville on top of Delphus Jefferson. We'll be back for the third quarter. When we come back, you're watching high school football here on WOSN. Welcome back. The third quarter brought to you by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cfbohio.com. 34 to 7. Spencerville on top of Delphus Jefferson. Patrick Hamler and Darn Evergall here with you uh, in the crowd with the people here at uh, Stadium Park and Champions Field. And uh, Spencerville has uh, taken it to Delphus Jefferson here in the last 16 or so minutes of football action. And Spencerville will field the kick and drop oh, the in yard line. Yeah, the ball does come out. Oh, and man. it will be Jefferson football, so the Jeff Cats having a nice start here to the second half as they were just looking for anything positive after think, the yeah. first half, and this is a great start. Yeah, Andrew Cooley, the freshman, comes up with the ball on that one there and gives the Jeff Cats great field position. And we're talking about the crowd we're sitting among, and I haven't seen too many people ever, if anybody, really get up and leave for uh, Delphus Jefferson. So give the crowd a lot of kudos for that, for sticking around when their team's down 34-7. to Without a doubt, always nice to see that with a high school football crowd. And it will be Cooley, who I believe will be taking snaps and fumbles it, corrals it, and tries to hit back upfield and is tackled around the... 11. Of course, Delphus Jefferson having their depth chart at quarterback Julio tested. Key. Carter Agner uh, appears to be injured, has been moving kind of slow. His helmet still off on the uh, sideline. Luke Rohde uh, is out of the game, not even in the side on the sideline. Looks like he will be done for the night as well. And uh, you look down the roster, there really isn't anybody else that's uh, tapped at quarterback. So it's Andrew Cooley after. It was Dean Trentman taking some direct snaps there for the second half of the second quarter. And now Cooley lets it go. Pass is incomplete. Third down and 11 coming up. And we give these Delphus kids credit, though. They're, you know, encouraging Cooley on every, every chance they get. You know, he is a freshman coming in here in an unusual situation for him, I'm sure. You know, and, and they're really, you know, patting him on the helmet saying, you know, hey, on that incomplete pass. So, you know, they're all rallying around him. Uh, giving him an opportunity to learn the ropes really quickly. And reps like this multiply, compound in their effect later on. If he, if he is the future at, at the quarterback position for uh, Delphus Jefferson, at, at least at some point, I know Rhodey is a junior. Rhodey might be the starter next year. But Cooley can run, and they're just having problems hanging on to the football as that one is loose once again. Millmine corrals it, but they are going to be all the way back to the 20-yard line after starting at their own, I'm sorry, at the Spencerville 10. Yeah, facing a fourth down now. And this is a Spencerville defense that really, you know, is strong up front. You got some big guys on that all, uh, defensive line for uh, Spencerville. Mm. So they're going to attempt a 39-yard field goal. Don't have that uh, particular kicker on our roster. and This one is going to be short. It's going to be filled and brought out from the end zone. Dylan Short is going to field it out to the 33-yard line. So Spencerville will eventually get that start on offense after a brief interlude from Delphus Jefferson's offense. And... Just goes to show you, I know that we and you out there watching watch football, high school, college pros, all the different levels, and everyone just kind of makes it look pretty easy. But I'll tell you, playing quarterback, uh, organizing an offense, running plays is not easy. You need a lot of guys all on the same page, and when you're having to swap guys out and bring young guys in, it, it's, it's not easy. It's a challenge and certainly something to commend these coaches that do this week in and week out. Oh, absolutely. And these young kids are just trying to learn the system, you know, themselves. 
here since the ball. The sophomore who's got a pretty good grasp of Spencerville's system. Takes it down for a lot of jewelry first down after the 48. And you watch these Spencerville uh, running backs. They do a nice job of following their blockers all the time. I mean, you know, they don't try to outrun them. You know, you saw Sensenbo right there just kind of picking his way through. Mm -hmm. Sees a blocker here, sees one there, and, and just kind of follows them right up the field. And this is Smith on the sweep out to the 41, maybe the 42-yard line. Very close to a Lottox Jewelry first down. And they... Brady Smith on the carry. They will give it to him. All right. Ball on the 42. Here is going the other way. I believe that was short on the ball. sense of ball, rather. Tackle by number 23, Dean Trentman. So this will be the... MO for Spencerville from here on out. Thinking if they run the ball long enough, they will get a clock that runs. Absolutely, and if they can punch this one in, which, you know, they, they're going to eat up an awful lot of time off the clock right now. Big thing for them is they got to hold on to the ball. They've let it go a couple times. Here is Smith on second down. Finds the corner and is going to get pushed out of bounds at around the two yard line two or the one is where they'll mark him out lot of truly first down the first and goal for spencerville well grady smith's a nice looking runner i mean he really has the speed on the outside when he gets around the corner and he turns that corner really quickly and then he gets that opening down the sideline and you know he just turns on the jets they've been impressed by smith's speed as well as sensibaugh's speed of course they're both listed as athletes on the Spencerville yeah. roster. Well, they, they can catch the ball as well as run the ball. And looking up the middle there. And that will be a Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. So. Uh, not sure if that was. Touchdown. Was that Orr that carried it? Couldn't really see from the mass that was in there. I thought maybe if it was up the middle, it was either Lozier or it was Orr. I don't think I see Lozier out on the field, so I would. It looked like Orr that jumped see. up and had the ball in his hand at the time. So Yeah, Orr with the keeper, and now Orr with the extra point. Up and good. 41-7. to seven. Spencerville on top of Delphus Jefferson. 8.04 left in the third quarter, and we will have a running clock when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back, 41 to seven. Spencerville in command. The Bearcats gonna move to 500 on the season. Delphus Jefferson will finish their season one and nine. Don't usually pronounce things like this with 7.42 left in the third quarter, but this one well in hand for the Bearcats as the ball on the kickoff will head out of bounds. So that'll move it up to the 35 yard line and Delphus Jefferson will get the football to start out, and um, as it's been for the last about quarter and a half, we're going to see some different guys come out trying to run the Delphus Jefferson offense. As we mentioned earlier, Carter Agner appears to be uh, out, is out for the game. Luke Rohde is uh, out as well. Those were the two listed quarterbacks that were on the team. So we've seen some Wildcat from Dean Trentman, and uh, Andrew Cooley has come in and uh, run the offense at quarterback as well, and I believe he is back out there to try it again here, first and 10 at the 35, and a flag comes out, which thank goodness, because <laughs> that ball went right through Cooley's hands. It's a false start. That one might have been a case of did, what came first, the chicken or the egg? You know, maybe did the, did the whistle take his eyes off the ball and make the, and cause it? Right. Or did it just go through his hands? I'm not sure which, but either way, it's a good thing that the whistle did blow. They're gonna, they moved it back 10 yards and officials like, whoa, 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 just, just five. Clock continuing to run. Of course, when a 
game becomes a spread of 30 points or more. A running clock starts until that is reduced as that pass is high, intended for Millmine, number 11. And defended by Grady Smith, number 11 for He's Spencerville. So. Cooley getting some on the job training tonight. Of course, when you're a freshman, you don't really expect to see a whole lot of time in, uh, in a football game, especially when you've got two guys ahead of you at your position, but here you are. Yep, absolutely, and uh, you know. <laughs> Surprise, next season starts now. And you really don't want to come up against the Spencerville defense that's out there right now, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Bearcats showing blitz, here's second down and 15. Cooley gets rid of it, and it'll be incomplete. I don't know if he was looking for Trentman or if he was just throwing that away, but in any case, it'll be third and 15. Well, the tough thing, too, for Cooley is he is a freshman coming in, and he's facing a blitz almost every down by the Spencerville Bearcat defense, and you see Gavin Schwartz coming in there on him, and so he's got pressure every time. So he's trying to get rid of the ball as quickly as he can, but the problem with that is is, is receivers are not getting an opportunity to run the route at all. Third and 15, and the handoff to Trentman. Looking for some space and not finding a whole lot. About a yard gain, and that's it. Fourth down. And it looks like they will elect to punt. And without Rody in there, they can switch punters as well. So they're, you know, they should give Spencerville some good field position somewhere around the 45-50 uh, yard line. Sure, is that Trentman back there punting as well? I think so. Oh. And a really high snap, and this one gets over the head of Trentman and is going to not be able to do anything with it. Ball is loose. In any case, Spencerville is going to get it with Primo Real Estate at the Delphus Jefferson five-yard line. We've seen a lot of that from Delphus Jefferson tonight, a lot of high snaps. And, you know, fortunately when they had, you know, Wagner in there, there at six foot four, he was able to pull those snaps down. But, you know, the other guys are not going to be able to do that. Trentman's 5'10". Yeah, it gives so them a little bit. That ball missed by about, what, six inches, yep. you think? Yep. Spencerville gets the ball first and goal. And this is going to be, I believe, or on the keeper. And the pile pushes all the way down to the two, maybe to the one yard line. Spencerville looking to punch it in for one more Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. Yeah, or just following up Gavin Swartz and Josh Sindler, Sindler, and the big guys up front there, and Javier Franco, and looks like they're still got their same offensive guys in there. Of course, number 75, Trevor Whitner in, in there. Handoff here on second and one. And there will be the record lawn and landscape touchdown. By Zach Lozier, for a Zach Lozier punches the ball in, and that will extend the Spencerville lead to 40 points, 47 to 7. Yeah, I think they're going right up the, uh, it was Trevor Whitney is what I was trying to say, going right up the back of those big guys up front there for uh, Spencerville. Or's extra point is up and good. It's a 47, 48 to seven lead for Spencerville. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And our first down sponsor is Lottox Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over four, 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lottox.com. 48-7, Spencerville in command. 
after getting the ball at the Jefferson five yard line, only taking a couple of plays to punch it in and extend their lead. Ball taken out to the 30 yard line and that is where the Jeff Cats will start. Parker Shade returning that ball. And as we look ahead to what else is on tap in the area for week 10 and of course there are a lot of people uh, in Delphus who will of course be interested in the St. John's Blue Jays and how they do but also with an eye I'm sure to the Marion Local cold water game as Marion Local seeks to break the wins record that Delphus St. John's has held for you know, about 25 seasons I think it's Trentman tucks and runs here on first down and took a shot there as he went out of bounds and I think he might be hurt as well yeah I think he I think he pulled up with a cramp in his hamstring yeah he was already pulling up yeah and he took a shot to the knee tough tough break for that young man because he has really worked hard all night long carried the ball threw the ball done everything he possibly can to help this Delphus team Of course, the big matchup in the Northwest Conference will be Bluffton and Columbus Grove as those two teams have seemed like they've been on a collision course since the first week of the season. And uh, it'll be, uh, that will be a, that'll be a hot ticket. And that'll be a hotly contested matchup as well. Yeah, and that won't be played at Bluffton. So again, like I said, last year was the only two losses I believe Bluffton had last year were to Columbus Grove and, you know, it doesn't seem to matter for Columbus Grove how many quarterbacks you want to go through. We're, we're going to go through them all, but we're still going to keep turning it away. They got, of course, they got the best running back in the Northwest Conference in Trenton Barraza, too, so that doesn't hurt. But, you know, Bluffton, I, I had Bluffton last week, and, and they're, they're the real deal. They, they got speed. They got good run, horses in the backfield, and so it should be a really interesting contest. Transitioning to the fourth quarter, the final 12 minutes, they'll blow it in and then the clock will continue to run. 48 to seven. Spencerville on top of Delphus Jefferson as the Bearcats will finish the regular season at 500. And if you uh, talk to Spencerville after week three, when they were three and oh, you probably wouldn't have thought that that would be what they were looking at. And they'd be happy with a 500 record, but that's how it turned out for Spencerville, but the season will continue on here. And oh. unabated to the quarterback is exactly what that looks like, folks. Cooley takes a hit and loses a bunch of yardage there on second down. It's like Blaylon Raider, a linebacker, 5'10", 190 pound sophomore. Yep. And no one touched him coming through there. I'm surprised that they, and they're still having Cooley just drop back and try to pass the ball. I know you're down 48 to seven, but give this kid a little bit of time to, to at least run the ball a couple of times and move around the pocket back here, you know, because he's not getting any time back here at all. No, he has had not had, has not had any time to throw. And Cooley's going to take off and run here on third down and not a whole lot there, about a yard, and that is it. And that'll bring up fourth down. That was sensible in there on the stop. like a few new faces in there for Spencerville's defense. Some new numbers maybe up front there. I don't reckon that didn't see earlier on, but. I think Parker Rarig is a freshman, number 68. He's in there. Ashton Boyer, number 65. I think he's uh, relatively newly entered. And trouble with the snap once again. Oh, and Spencerville is there. Flag oh. comes out, ball comes out. And Spencerville has a touchdown. It was number 44 that picked that ball up and ran it in. I think that Chandler was the, Bassett. That was the marker that I saw. Once again, gonna get the rods and cones checked after this game, I think. Yeah. yeah. I believe it was Chandler Bassett. Sophomore uh, just picked that ball up, but it was number again, number 27 coming in there, unabated, just hammering the quarterback. Snap, hold, kick is up, and it is good. 
55-7. to seven. Spencerville on top. We'll be back. Welcome back, 54 to seven, Spencerville on top of Delphus Jefferson. It has been pretty short scoring drives. That ball will go out of bounds. Jefferson will get the ball at the 35. So last touchdown for Spencerville was a fumbled punt by Delphus Jefferson that they ran in for a touchdown. Before that, Jefferson also having trouble with the punt getting tackled at the five, and Spencerville ran that ball in in two plays and put more points on the board. Yeah, we've seen a whole lot of new players in there for Delphus Jefferson. Like we said, we lost, they lost their two uh, quarterbacks, and Carter Agner went out, and Luke Rohde went out, and now they're down to you know a freshman quarterback out there, but they've seen a lot of other fresh faces in there, and the only one that's really been a mainstay for them all night long has been Dean Trentman, who's done everything he possibly can for this Delphus team to try to you know keep him in the game, but this game got out of hand real quick. Handoff here on first down. That's Aiden Jennings, the 5'7 freshman. As a number of freshmen have been able to get in there and see some time for Delphus Jefferson as Alan Pullman, the head coach, getting to see what some of his way younger guys can do. Usually you talk about younger guys on a football team, you're talking about juniors and sophomores. They've got freshmen out there that they're seeing what they can do, especially at uh, the quarterback position. And yeah, this was a young team in the first place. They only had five seniors, I think, on the roster. Cooley lets it go, pass incomplete. Millmine, the intended receiver. Drew Bumgarner, I believe, was the guy on the pass protection there for uh, Spencerville. I don't think Cooley's completed a pass yet. No. I don't think he has. I'd, li I'd like to see him complete a pass. Like, get, get something in the books. Get something there for your freshman year just to say, hey, we, we, we did something. We, we built a foundation, something we can work on for next year. Third and 11, Cooley rolling out, firing, pass incomplete, looking for Millmine there at the 50, and that'll bring up fourth down. Pass falls incomplete, brings up fourth down. That was one of the better looking passes I've seen him throw. That yeah. was a nice spiral, had a little bit on it, and just a little high over the receiver's head, but you know, had a nice spiral to it. Yep. And number 62, I'm back there to Punt the ball for Delphus Jefferson. Is that Braxton hurries? A high punt will take a Jefferson bounce and then take a Spencerville bounce as down at the 43 yard line. Dean Trentman is uh, bandaged up and he's heading back to the locker room. Got a nice hand from some of the Jefferson faithful that saw him walking off. Yeah, you know, kid had a hard game, I'll tell you what. He He's going to feel it tomorrow, but, you know, it's satisfactory in the fact that he was able to do a lot of different things tonight, run from the wildcat position that he probably hasn't been able to do all season long. Right. Didn't think he was going to get the opportunity to do that tonight, but, you know, he did complete a, pa a couple passes too. So a flag on the play. That will back up Spencerville five yards. And that will keep the clock rolling here. 5.30 to go here in quarter number four. And as we said, Spencerville will continue their season, you know, going into week number 11. We're not sure where or when or who against, but Handoff going here. This is Austin McMichael. And he picks up some Austin McMichael nice yardage great. there on the play. Oh, look at that. Another great running back from Spencerville. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. 
What a shot. And he, and he spun out of the first tackle and yeah. took about three guys to knock him out, too. So he's a typical Spencerville running back. Sometimes I think they just grow the yeah, yeah. lanes yeah. or something. I don't, it's in I don't the cornfields back here. You don't see them. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like a press they come off of. How about this run? Check out this action here. That's, that's Owen Scherer. A lot of truly first down, and that will move the one, sticks. Oh, nice looking run there, too, for that young man. Yeah. He got around the corner there really quickly. Zeke Ward for Jefferson making the tackle. Holding on the Bearcats. But we've got holding. So never mind most of what I've said in the last 25 seconds. Still a good run. Yes, yeah. it was a good run. That part is true. Everything then, else, yep, the, the everything else, the yardage yeah. and the tackle and all that kind of stuff. Spin move there, Keaton Jacobs. About a yard on that play. Keaton Jacobs on the carry. Yeah, he ran right straight into that. Brady Defensive line for uh, Delphus Jefferson, so he didn't have anywhere to go on that one. Absolutely. That'll be third down and eight. And I know there's a new quarterback in there for Spencerville as well as Carter Orr's day is done. I think. Trying to get his number. He stands sideways right now. I can't see it. I thought it was Sam Goki, but I'm not certain. That's number 17. 16. 16. All right, well, that's Gavin Comer. A freshman, normally a tight end. Hand off up the middle, picks up about five, and that'll bring up fourth down as we head under three minutes. And still a lot of the Delphus and Jefferson fans still sitting in their seats. They're going to last this one out for the team in their last game of the of the season. So and there's still a few out here that are not uh, properly dressed for cooler weather. And they're sticking I know they're out not. Too, so I don't I don't know what to think of that. <laughs> well done, or you're nuts. Sure. <laughs> Fourth down. Going to go for it on fourth down, and they're going to get the lot of truly first down. McMichael on the carry. Taking that one through. Michael that one is carried by McMichael, and that'll move the sticks for the Bearcats. Well, want to thank uh, Jacob O'Neill for putting this one together for us and here on scene, making sure that you've got a, a game to watch, making sure all the audio and the video working just fine. Fifty-four to seven, Spencerville. On their way to five and five, and they will just go ahead and kneel it down for the final couple of plays. Our kids bringing us loose nuts and bolts. Uh, yes, she is. Well, actually, he's bringing half of one. So he's bringing uh, half of one. You're not sure quite what that is, but. Uh. All right. I didn't break anything. <laughs> as, far as, as far as I know. <laughs> Coming up on the final minute, of course, we thank you so much for being a part of our uh, broadcast tonight. And as we are into our annual campaign, of course, we cannot do what we do, which is broadcast all of these local sports, whether it's uh, football, basketball, whatever it is, we can't do it without your financial support. We are on our way to raising $175,000. That's only a portion of what we need to cover all of our expenses. Would you consider making a donation to our annual campaign in order to support what we do here, which is bring you local high school sports in a way that no one else in any other part of the state does like we do. We thank you. Go to axeministries.com to donate. Thank you for your support as the final seconds of this one tick down. Spencerville rolls tonight 54-7 to over Delphus Jefferson. That wraps up our coverage of this one tonight with our Never Golf and our entire WOSN staff. I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everyone, from Delphus.